Welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. My name is Marvin St. Louis. Today is a very interesting show for consumers as we're going to diverge into consumer education and consumer protection. Consumer organizations around the world are currently faced with a number of challenges in efforts to produce, in efforts to protect consumers and empower them. Some of the major issues globally include how to deal with the fast changing digital landscape, which affects consumers, the growing complexity and diversity of consumer products and services, which require more information and education, the globalization and integration of markets, which create cross-border issues for consumers and demand more cooperation and coordination amongst cons consumer organizations. The environmental and social impacts of consumption, which calls for more sustainable and responsible consumer behavior. In studio with me to answer a few of these challenges faced by consumer organizations, we have Acting Director of the Consumer Affairs Department, Ms. Wendy Frederick, and the current President of the National Consumers Association, Dr. Lewis. Two lovely young ladies, how are you doing today? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get immediately into the meat of the matter, and this question goes to both of you. What are some of the main challenges that consumers face in St. Lucia, and how does your department handle them or address them? I'll start with you, Wendy. Okay. Um, one of the major challenges are the increase in prices. That's one. We have several um, <clears throat> in terms of the quality of goods that they purchase. They face these challenges. Um, there may be some issues. For example, you'll see no exchange, no refund, all of these things. So what we're doing as a department is to try to educate the consumers, try to, um, for example, if the price increase, we've recognized that some of them are, these challenges are like, it's beyond us. So, um, because we only have, can monitor prices of goods that are price controlled, and they're listed on the Distribution and Price of Goods Act. So, while we have no control over all, so what we try to do is to educate, um, let consumers know, um, to shop around what to do, what to buy. So we, it's a lot of education that needs to be done, a lot of communication. Um, if they have issues, they can come to the department with goods when you know you have an issue with a business. So they can visit the consumer affairs department, make a complaint if they have any issues or you know they're getting difficulty with a business. So all of that, we're there too. And we're available to help and address these needs. And I must say the department has recently ramped up consumer education. We see you all over the news. We see the deputy director. Mm -hmm. How has that been going for you? Do you see any benefits from it before I get to Dr. Lewis? Yes, we have seen um, some benefits. Uh, and then what we, de what we do now is that uh, because we've launched that, we, we get a lot of calls now. We get um, consumers understanding a bit more so they're able to communicate. They call the department, they report. So we get a lot of calls right now on different issues because they recognize some people will say, oh, we didn't even know the Consumer Affairs Department existed. Um, so one of the things, for example, in um, March earlier this year, we observed Will Consumer Rise Day, um, empowering consumers through clean energy transitions. That was one of our, that was the theme. theme. And we actually had an expo in the Constitution Park. So we were educating people there. And even there, you'd find persons saying, hey, we didn't know about the Consumer Affairs Department. Right? So now you, we get persons more aware that they actually have some form of redress. They, they have this avenue for redress, um, which is the Consumer Affairs Department. So it, it has helped a, a, a lot. Talking about not knowing about the Consumer Affairs <laughs> Department, Dr. Lewis, what would you say about the National Consumers Association? Because I think a lot of persons um, may say they don't know there's another agency, or sometimes they think there's one agency. Your agency might even be considered the Consumer Affairs Department as a name they know, or the Consumer Affairs Department might even be considered the National Consumer Association. People don't realize there's two different agencies. What do you say to this, and what, as I said, what is your department doing to address the, the current consumer issues in St. Lucia? 
Okay, first, there are several consumer issues in St. Lucia that our department or the National Consumer Association work, is working collaboratively, collaboratively with the Consumer Affairs Department. Um, one of them is price gorging. I don't think we have any control over price gorging, especially in items that are not price controlled. So a lot of the merchants are taking advantage of that situation. There are exponential increase to prices, and we've recognized that it's not a St. Lucia scenario, it's a global scenario. Um, we also have quality of goods. Um, that's a challenge that we have to face. Um, also the authenticity of goods. Um, for example, there are fake medications that sometimes you only get to know about them from the more developed countries. And sometimes we are depots in which they can be offloaded. But thanks to the Consumer Affairs Department and institutions like the Bureau of Standards, who are the watchdogs, the gatekeepers, to ensure that we are not proliferated with those fake items. But if an individual brings it and say, you know, you have organic medication, herbal medication, if it's just sold to consumers without being in the public hemisphere, then we have no control over it, but it still remains a challenge. Um, also, merchants displaying signs, no exchange, no refund. This is illegal. It is unconstitutional, according to our Labor Act in Senusha, which was passed in January 2022. You cannot display a sign saying no exchange, no refund, because according to the Act, the three hours have to kick in if you purchase something that is not compliant to your needs or it's, it doesn't meet the requirements or the quality or the standard, is refund, replace, or repay. Any of those three hours have to happen. Doctor, so, before you move on, sorry to cut you off, how do you think we should address the issue <coughs> that these things was, I too was faced with this sign at a local business. How do you think, or you think is the best way forward to address this issue? Well, I'm hoping with um, the systems that the Consumer Affairs Department have put in place, mm -hmm. Um, their monitors, their, their consumer affairs officers will be able to visit those places and let them know that these signs are unconstitutional. They should not be erected because if somebody purchases an item from you that is default, defunct, you have a responsibility to take it back. Another challenge that consumers face, and I say that from the perspective of the National Consumer Association with reports that we get from consumers, is buying an item and a merchant will tell you it has no warranty, especially if it's an electrical item. Every electrical item have a warranty. It could be six months to one year, but it has a warranty. And if somebody purchases a fan and it, after two weeks the fan stop working, you have a responsibility to replace it, refer, re, re, repair it, or refund it. And consumers need to understand what their rights are. And to your question, to what the Consumer Association is doing, we are emb embarking on different educational drives. For example, um, prior to Consumer International Day, we did some television appearances. We were at NTN um, with the Minister of Commerce. Yes. Um, and now we have collaborated. Consumer Association um, and the Consumer Affairs Department have had its, one of its best relationships um, ever since. Mistress Frederick became the consumer, the acting consumer affairs director. She, she actually reached out to our department, our association, before our association would be the one reaching out. <laughs> but this time it, it came around that she decided to reach out and let's see how we can collaborate because it's very easy to cross borders mm -hmm. as an association and as a department because we more or less represent the consumers on the same things. Yes. If a consumer has a problem, um, they can either go to the Consumer Affairs Division or they can come to the Consum National Consumer Association. So really, we are the advocates. We are non-governmental. Mm -hmm. We are private sector, more or less institutionalized. So a consumer could come to us with an issue. And if we cannot address the issue, we would refer them to the Consumer Affairs Department where you would have the Consumer Council and the Consumer Tribunal
to mediate on the on behalf of the consumers to an extent that the advocates cannot. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly talk about the rights and responsibilities of consumers, as some persons may not be aware, and it would be in the best interest to know about the rights as well as importantly the responsibilities when shopping. Um, Ms. Frederick, could you address consumers' rights and responsibilities? What is in place for consumers? Okay, so basically um, consumer rights, we have to ensure that as consumers we have the right to safety. We have several. Um, the right to safety, the right to information, you must be informed as a consumer, ensure that um, you, whatever information that you're receiving is honest and truthful. Uh, the right to choose, you, ha you can select, you, can, you have a choice. The right to satisfaction of basic needs, ensure that all your needs are met basically. Uh, right to redress, so again, as we said, the Consumer Affairs Department is there to receive, ensure that you receive a fair settlement of your claims, the right to consumer education, which is what we're trying to do now to educate. And so as consumers, we have several rights, the right to a healthy environment. We have to make sure that then, but however, as consumers, you also have a responsibility, yeah. right? So you must be responsible, no, choose know what you want to buy. So all of that, we, we must ensure that consumers are responsible. Compare your prices, don't just go to just, and um, one of the things that um, we recognize too, you go to a store and you'll get an item, it's not in English, right? You're trying to figure out, so you have a responsibility, you need to report that because you need to know what you're buying. If you're reading something, it's not in English, you, you know, um, probably, is, I've seen some, is it Chinese languages, these yeah. different things, you know, you need to know what you're buying and, and that kind of thing. So um, ask questions, you have the responsibility and the, 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 the business establishment, they have the responsibility to answer and address your questions. So these are basically some of the things. Dr. Lewis, before we go to a break, um, do you think consumers are being responsible and has that affect the way they, they, they shop and then they face a lot of consumer um, situations with business places, you think um, there's a lack of responsibility by consumers? Yes, in my opinion, I believe that there are consumers that do not take responsibility for their action, yet still they want redress and sometimes they take their redress to social media and not to the institutions that can assist them. That's why we want to try our best to have consumer education, which is the right of the consumer. Consumers have a right to examine goods thoroughly. Persons just pick up anything from the supermarket shelf, and sometimes even when it's decayed or defective, they just talk, 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 and do not return it. I'll give you a case in point. I went to a particular supermarket and I bought a packet of plums. When I got home, I opened the bag. Of course, it looked good on the outside, but you cannot see what's in the middle. And several of those in the middle was decayed. I took it back to the supermarket. Now, I know persons who have done that, and they say, oh, well, you, we, we don't take back fruits, but you have a right to take it back. Because first, it was an imported fruit. I could not have seen what's inside because I couldn't open the bag at the supermarket. So we have that responsibility. Um, they have a responsibility to read. You purchase, you, you're about to purchase something, for example, medication or anything. You cannot read the instructions because it's in a foreign language. You have a responsibility to go to the Bureau of Standards, report it, or the Consumer Affairs Division, because you're purchasing an item that you cannot understand what it is. Mm -hmm. They have to ensure that they get a bill or receipt. How can you be refunded or you return an item if you did not ask for a receipt? A business place cannot tell you they cannot issue a receipt. Once you're going to do exchange of goods or services for money, you have to issue a receipt. They have a right to communicate, not to be obnoxious or disrespectful, but to exercise their rights and carry out transactions in a business-like manner, not a number. So consumers must understand what their responsibilities are. You will not be able to get redress if you do not understand your responsibilities. And merchants, um, suppliers of goods and services will continue to take advantage 
if persons do not speak up. So we all are consumer advocates. And that's why, as a consumer association, we encourage persons to be part of that advocacy voice because there is strength in numbers. If 10 people were to go to a business place to purchase something that was default and they had to take it back, and they stand together and say, I'm going to bring it back, and that sign you have there is illegal or un unconstitutional, it would be better than just one person trying to do it. And we find as an association, persons only know the consumer association is effective when they have an issue. So we're trying to ensure that we can educate the public with their rights and their responsibilities so we all become advocates. Okay, thank you for that, Dr. Lewis. When we come from the break, we'll deal with some consumer case studies and how best to address them. We'll be right back. The Ministry of Agriculture presents a cassava and coconut festival Sunday, August 27th at the Mikul Playing Field from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Enhancing our food and nutrition security. Festival Coco. A cassava my deal. A Mikul Ika Pweku Pori Coco. A Pori Cassava I keep plays on me. Festival Coco. Entertainment from the best. T Blacks, Ocean, King Arthur, Umpa, Invader, Ezra, Livon Silly, and lots more. Food and drinks will be on sale. Kids corner available. And the admission is totally free. So it's a nice day for the family. Like I near no plan for Pokemon. So let's rebuild the cassava and coconut industry. The Cassava and Coconut Festival, Sunday, August 27th. Welcome back to Issue Answers. My name is Marvin St. Louis. How do consumer agencies collaborate with stakeholders to promote consumer protection education? And tell us some of the, the other consumer agencies, organizations that are available in St. Lucia. For example, you, know, you, have, you have solid waste if it's for garbage or waste. Um, could you tell us more about that? Yeah, we have um, a few agencies that work along with us. Um, of course, we have the National Consumers Association. We have the NTRC in terms of telecommunication. Um, Nook. Nook. Yeah, we have Nook. So we collaborate with these other agencies. So um, as we say, because okay, we have Bureau of Standards, for example, because of some of the things that they're not under our jurisdiction, however, we work along with okay. these other agencies to ensure that consumers um, benefit or reap the benefits of these. Just, just give me an example how does that work. For example, okay, Dr. Lewis spoke about um, you purchasing an item that's not in English, so I'm a consumer. I come to the Consumer Affairs Department. How does that collaboration OK. Work? So for example, that, that example that you just gave, something is not in English. Somebody comes to us. We will not be in a position to be able to. So what we will do, we'll contact the Signature Bureau Standards. So this is the, the, the relationship that we have with these agencies. So what they would do is um, look, go and look into the matter, and then they would address it. and of course give feedback um, for example even um, items that are recalled you might get items that are recalled you know national internationally we get these things we collaborate with the Bureau of Standards to okay. see how you know we can address it matters like that so basically um, we have good working relationships with these other agencies anything you like to add and with the National Consumer Association we are a member of the Global Consumer Association, which is called Consumer International. Consumer International is an advocacy group for globally for countries, more developed countries, less developed countries, and developing countries. So what we do is compare case studies. Um, in Consumer International, they carry out research, what happens in the more or less developed world, what are the things that affect consumers. A lot of legislation um, starts with Consumer International because they look at 
legislative um, documents from throughout the world and which ones have commonalities. Um, there, are, there is a Congress where you get for the education and what happens globally for consumers. So it, it's really an education forum. There is more education and advocacy, but looking at it from different um, countries where you compare case studies, where you do time series analyses on how consumers get affected. So like the Department of Consumer Affairs, we also collaborate with NOC, NTRC, um, Senator Bureau of Standards. Um, it depends on what the, the consumer issues are. Mm -hmm. We would know which agency that we should collaborate with. But there is that synergy mm -hmm. between all of the stakeholders when it relates to consumers their rights and their responsibilities. And just to add, even with um, the OACS and CARICOM, we have um, good working relationships. So they um, very often collaborate, um, CARICOM, OACS Commission, we collaborate, we have meetings, they try to educate, and we try to um, work along with other um, islands within the CARICOM and OECS, so we have really good re working relationships with St. Kitts and you know these other countries. Um, we we discuss, we try to see what's common, uh, like issues among consumers within OECS, within CARICOM, and try to you know see how we can address it as um, you know CARICOM and OECS. Okay. So we work along with other um, agencies. international agencies. As well. And just to add, recently we have held several meetings um, with CARICOM where they try to bring in members of the OECS together um, to develop, um, understand issues of consumers. For example, St. Vincent is about developing a consumer association. So we, are, we, we partner with them like sisters to assist them through the process, setting up a consumer association. Since we mentioned case studies in your point, let's, let's get to some practical case studies and situations, especially in St. Lucia, and how, as consumer organizations, they were addressed. Um, Dr. Lewis, you were telling us about a case study or yes. before we started. Yeah. Um, we have several case studies, but I will choose the bigger one, where most persons do not know their rights and responsibilities. We had a consumer who came in with an issue of purchasing a 4x4 from a particular um, car dealer. And they got issues with the vehicle from day one. And it was up and down with that car dealer, very reputable car dealer, and they refused to address the situation apart from taking it, checking it out, giving it back to them, but the vehicle was faulty. And of course, one of our consumer officers, because we do have officers at the National Consumer Association trained in consumer affairs, and of course went with that particular consumer to the car dealer. Um, of course, by that time, the consumer had a file with all the issues with the vehicle, and they had to take it back. Because according to the Consumer Protection Act, you have three hours, repair, refund or replace. And they had to replace the person's vehicle with a new one after that consumer had the vehicle for about three months. With issues, bring back, take back, check that, check that. They had to take it back because it was a fault to no fault of the consumer. The consumer didn't do something to the vehicle. They had an issue from day one which they reported to the car dealer. So we have several case studies where we got redress and we got redressed according to the law, not according to, because as a car dealer, you really don't want to be hauled to court, have your name plastered all over social media with a particular vehicle type, which they may have been away, had a fault from day one. So why do you, quickly, why do you think there was this resistance to provide that redress in the first place when these issues first came up by the deal? You see, because a lot of us consumers do not know our responsibilities. So probably, you know, persons would have had purchased vehicles before and they got the stress if it and they just dealt if it probably brought it to a mechanic, stayed with it until it frustrated them enough to sell it because they didn't know their rights. Mm -hmm. But that particular consumer knew his rights and responsibilities. So he stood his ground 
and came to an association who no, he knew would have advocated on his behalf. We did not even have the opportunity to call the Consumer Affairs Department, who is our next step if we cannot get redress for a problem. But the car dealer just took back the vehicle. The case studies from the Consumer Affairs um, like We've had quite a bit of, of um, successes in terms of our cases. Um, generally, the business community would um, cooperate. So, for example, we had um, somebody who bought a school shoe, and within the first three weeks of going to school, the shoe was damaged. Um, and the, the consumer was able to get a replacement um, for the shoe. We had, like, for example, a lot of the issues that we get to are with um, electronics. So washing machines. Um, recently, we had one where the washing machine, um, the, but the um, consumer purchased that washing machine and uh, it was apparently given it had some issues but it had to do with the place that they had it I think it had to be in a certain position they had to build certain things around it and even with that the the, the business was willing to cooperate and really assisted them in getting it repaired um, despite the fact that it may have been on their end as well where they didn't position it properly, it got damaged, but then they still agreed. But um, a lot of the time, like previously, before the legislation, the Consumer Protection Act, was, um, which was enacted in January of 2022, what we would have done was to solve most of our cases through moral suasion, right? That this is how it was done. So you come, you make a complaint, then we intervene, we discuss. We, however, with the enactment of the Consumer Protection um, Act, uh, which um, was in January 2022, what we did, the Consumer Protection Council was established as well as the tribunal. So the complaints and investigations officers within the Consumer Affairs Department would receive a complaint, carry out the investigation, and then they would get their report and forward it to the, the council who would now be the ones to um, intervene and, and, and discuss and review the cases, and they would now do that. And if they're unable to come to a settlement with the businesses, this is where the tribunal is. So it's basically like a court, you know, because again, looking out for consumers, we know that a lot of them maybe cannot even um, afford um, to go to the, the, the court uh, and stuff. So we have the tribunal who is there available to do that. And then the final thing, of course, if the tribunal is not able to, then we allow them to go to the commercial courts. But this is all part of what um, the, the department and the Ministry of Commerce is doing as a whole for consumers. Final question, ladies. One minute for us to wrap up. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best practices and tips you can share with consumers to help them make more informed choices in the marketplace? Any one of you. I think, we, I think we both addressed that already. Yeah, but you yeah, to give one, yeah. one major tip. Could you please, let's end there so consumers could hear. What, give, give us a tip that consumers need to look out on best practices. They need to look out to. I believe consumers need to educate Kids. themselves. Yes, educate. It's very important to educate yourself on what are your rights and your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to examine goods before purchase. You have to be able to choose what you want. Read. You have to be able to read. You have to be able to buy goods based on needs and not wants. So the priority must be needs, and then wants would follow. And then you should know your rights. Do not just pick up something from the supermarket and then just blame the supermarket. You have a choice. If it is too expensive or you believe there is price gorging on that particular item, then you have a choice to purchase it or not to purchase it. You purchase it if it's a case of life and death. If it's not, then you leave it. Because sometimes we have to make statements as consumers. We have to make statements. You go to the market, somebody have a pair for $20, you don't just pick it up and say, cost of living high and start blaming mm -hmm. the government because you purchase one pair for $20. You might be an avocado pay. You might be surprised you go two vendors down and you get that same avocado for five dollars. So we must have we must exercise our choices because we have that. And if we all exercise our choices and we know what our rights are, a lot of the suppliers of goods and services will not take advantage of us. 
That's a good way to end. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode of Issues and Answers with two consumer agencies in St. Lucia. My name is Mark. Thank you. Mm -hmm.